to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your host today for a super awesome segment with my buddy Dan. Dan, how are you doing? How I am doing you? great, enjoying myself. Had an awesome weekend, and I'm ready to start some drawings. How are I'm you? I'm pumped. I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm really excited. Uh, we've been hanging out behind the scenes talking about all sorts of stuff epic music epic video games epic cartoons and stuff so i feel like today is going to be pretty fabulous um and i'm going to pass things over to you to kind of introduce yourself and go over you know the kind of work you do but first i do want to do a couple of housekeeping points just to let you folks know um, about some important points so um if you folks have not already uh please subscribe to the adobe live channel on youtube to stay up to date on like the latest stream um, mm -hmm. and participate in all the stuff that we do here on Adobe Live. Um, there's not going to be any creative challenges this week also. Um, so instead, join our creative boot camps. If you guys have not tuned in to a boot camp stream yet, they're super awesome. Um, it's a great place to either refresh um, your creative design skills or jump in and learn a lot about a new skill or something that you can kind of add to your Batman utility belt of design. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely check that out um but yeah without further ado uh why don't you introduce yourself for anyone who is maybe unfamiliar with you um, and your work and let us know what we're going to be kind of diving into for today all right well my name is dtm delta tango mike find me anywhere on the internet delta tango mike i am a 2d illustrator and i like to draw i love to draw all i ever want to do with my life is just hang out and draw and hang mm -hmm. out with other artists enjoy the creative process and see what happens and hopefully mm -hmm. sometimes good things happen sometimes you know you want to work on the artwork a little extra or maybe take a break and come back <laughs> mm -hmm. it happens it happens yeah. but lucky for you that's literally what we have planned for today there Doing you go art, hanging yeah. out meeting friends talking mm -hmm. to chat um <laughs> i love this tell us about this so the project that i'm working on is called art lifers and mm -hmm. uh in this it's a play on the art life where, you know, you kind of want to be an artist every day. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we take on other jobs in life. And so I had this big idea. I don't know how far it's going to get, but I have this big idea. Like I remember and I had other jobs in my life. I was a forklift driver. I was in mm -hmm. the Marine Corps at one time. Mm -hmm. I was a dishwasher. I was a cook. And it's like, but but that's the day job. And then my hobby or my real passion is art mm -hmm. and so i want to do draw illustrations of characters that have regular jobs like this is an astronaut mm -hmm. but he's an art lifer yeah so <laughs> i love it <laughs> thank you thank you no matter where you go in life you want to draw you want to draw and back in the day i used to carry a backpack mm -hmm. with me all the time and if anybody ever picked it up they would ask me what's in here and because it was heavy <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> art stuff yes mm -hmm. so i carry a ton of sketchbooks uh, markers pencils pens and so on anything that i feel that i may need at any given moment in case i get that inspiration to create something and so our lifers always carry a marker a pencil or something mm -hmm. so for now just for today i'm just going to share the creative process on how i go about developing the next character based on the same pose mm -hmm. so the idea is to work on the same pose have the same pose so they keep it simple because i had lots of different ideas and i've drawn and sketched out stuff that is like once you it's fun to explore but once you look at it like i need to draw like a hundred of these mm -hmm. that's gonna be a little bit tough so i wanted to keep it simple have that cartoon look and I want to use Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. And so this is an art lifer. He's a tattoo artist. Of course, a, represent a pre representation of myself. Got mm -hmm. the beard and the bald head. And I already have the template for the next art lifer. So we got a graffiti artist, fine artist, uh, pencil artist. And as time goes on, I want to draw like the DoorDash driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I want to draw like uh, a cook in a kitchen. You know, taking a break and, mm -hmm. and what are the tools that somebody who is has a regular job then wants to find the little time for just creative expression for, by themselves. Yeah. And so and then the background will reflect those things. So we start adding backgrounds as time goes on. So right now, all I have is the first guy who's the astronaut. Mm hmm. And the second guy who's the tattoo artist. And as time goes on, I'll add on I add on to them. 
And so before I start drawing, I can share a little bit about my process because it's very important that you understand and get to know these brushes right here mm. in the top left corner. Bam, there we go. We got uh, the pencil brush, the blob brush, and the paintbrush. And all of these are cool brushes. Uh, I kind of like the, the paintbrush because of the type of textures and the strokes, but the blob brush is my number one. Mm. My, my, my main tool that I love to use all the time. Woo, that's a lot, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see you jump into it, though, because I myself have kind of um, recently got into doing illustration um, in Illustrator for iPad. Um, and it's interesting. I'm sure there's some folks who are like illustrators in Photoshop or Fresco in the chat. But if you've never tried illustrating um, in iPad Illustrator, it's really great. There are mm -hmm. differences between doing like pixel illustration, um, pixel based illustration versus using the vectors. Um, so I'm pumped to kind of watch you dive into that and show people what it's nice. all about. Nice. Well, uh, Fresco has vector brushes mm -hmm. and that's where my love for that vector brush comes from. Mm -hmm. And I was using Adobe apps on the iPad way back before uh, Fresco. It was uh, Adobe Draw, Adobe mm -hmm. Line, Adobe Idea. So I, I I found a way to draw digitally mm -hmm. with vectors because I love how later on you can use this artwork for whatever you want and yeah. transform the size and it's still the artwork still is clean and clear. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, big time, big and time. And it's definitely, uh, you know, for to me, um, I feel like illustrating with vectors has come a long way in mm -hmm. the last few years. It's mm -hmm. I feel like it's super accessible. Um, and for my like drawing painting brain, I feel like it's not as difficult to wrap my head around as it was when I first tried to jump into Illustrator on desktop to draw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's pretty great. It's yep. pretty great. Yes. And and, and uh, so so let's go ahead and jump in and I will share a little bit about my process. So this is that uh, astronaut. So let me go ahead and turn off some of these layers. I guess I need to keep that one and turn these off right here. These color layers. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. And I can get rid of the background. There we go. Let's get rid of those backgrounds. There we go. And so most of my drawings start the same way. It's always an outline. And that's because my I started drawing and, it, and I was started drawing because I was inspired by comics. And so comic books have all these uh, the artwork is always has an outline of some kind. And so I, I can't get away from it no matter how hard I try. And uh, and so these are some outlines right here. Mm -hmm. And there's our blob brush and I can just draw something on the side real quick. Now this blob brush has the tapered ends and what i wanted to accomplish with this drawing is not have those tapered ends i wanted to have uh the the rounded ends so this is why when we select the brush that we want and there's a couple here the um, in the blob brush section basic round basic flat basic chisel and basic terminal i'm always selecting the basic round and I can go into the brush settings, which is on the left hand side on the bottom. And there's a couple of sections where you want to either turn it off and on or make adjustments. So the tapered ends, you can make an adjustment and change how much of a tapered end you get. The less it is, the, the rounder the end is going to be. And the higher it goes, let me see where you go. Come on, there it is. It gets sharper. And so I like that too. I like this tapered ends because it gives me that feeling or look of uh, ink, yeah. ink brushes. Yeah, mm -hmm. like classic comic kind of inking sharpness. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, and so a lot of times I use that, especially in that illustration of myself that is in my profile now on Behance. And uh, and so I, I I really like that because it pretends that it's that ink brush. But sometimes, like today, I want to turn that off because I don't want any tapered ends. Mm -hmm. So I want it to be rounded. The so now I when I draw, it looks like this. Nice. Boom. So now we have that that round and ends right there. But I also want to touch on the pressure dynamics. And here's where 
I wish this window would pop up, uh, pop and hang out because sometimes you want the pressure dynamics to be high. Mm -hmm. Boom. See, so you can start really thin and yeah. go really thick. And sometimes you want them low and that's because you still want some pressure. But a lot of times in some of these drawings, if I'm working with the details mm -hmm. and uh, then what I want is n the line weight to stay the same. Mm -hmm. So I don't want so much pressure dynamics or I can even turn it off. Come on. That's not right. There we go. Come on. Get back. Here we go. Boom. So, so if I don't want any pressure dynamics, I just turn that off. And, uh, and some, and you know, it's, uh, it's helpful sometimes depending on what you're drawing and where are you drawing? I tell people you need to find a table, a desk and draw because you sit in the couch ch chilling, you know, mm -hmm. sitting there scribbling and your hand will get tired because you're, you're having to put pressure on the iPad and mm -hmm. you're at an angle. Whereas when you're sitting forward, your hand is naturally adding that pressure to the screen. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to work so hard to get that thick and thin lines. But if you're going to chill in the couch and uh, you don't need any pressure, then it's really easy to just sit there and scribble and draw on the screen. So those are the two main uh, places where I go and make adjustments. Mm -hmm. And then the last place is the size. And uh, and there's uh, I'm going to go with three for now. And then there you go. We got a line right there. That's nice. Love it. Love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And the pressure's not so crazy. So like you can do a, um, you know, as you said, like kind of keeping the line weight pretty mm -hmm. consistent throughout the illustration mm -hmm. that will um, work. No problem. I love um, like just to comment on the sketch that we can see. I love that you have like thick lines for like the outside of your character and thick lines for some of the larger elements of the outfit, like the belt buckle and the sneakers and like mm -hmm. all of these things. And then you have like a consistent, but smaller line for some of the smaller details. I just think it looks really, really dynamic and really cool. Thank you. Thank you. You're yeah. It, that, that's what, that's what I learned from reading comics at least that's my excuse that's why i need to read comics <laughs> <laughs> hey i have excuses like that too uh my star wars toys are actually collectibles and figurines right. and i need them for reference mom that's right okay <laughs> <laughs> that's right and so uh just to go through the rest of this illustration once i already have my lines which is what you're always working on whenever you're using the blob brush tool once I'm done with the lines, then I go ahead and start the color process and I slowly build out the illustration and uh, and I'm going to share my step by step process and I'm outlining right now. I'm going to share it when I draw the next drawing, All right. but but I like to keep certain colors and certain layers so that way, whenever I need to go back and make adjustments, then I can just select that layer, change the color, make the adjustment and uh, um, transparency and boom i'm done and uh and so there's the so little by little you can see certain colors coming on mm -hmm. i'm bad at naming layers when i'm doing just art for myself mm -hmm. uh so don't judge me i feel like that's a uh, like common though um so don't feel too bad because i name my layers um when i'm going to be sending the file to somebody else but when it's <laughs> just me i'm just like new layer new layer and then i'm yep. like <laughs> I'm sure that this element I'm looking for is on layer 224, copy, copy, copy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yeah. And so, so that's what you're looking at right now. And as time goes on, you'll see I'm in the hundreds already. Um, and so the idea for this character was really uh, just uh, an artist. Mm -hmm. But I said to myself, you know, let's, let's go ahead and add some background to it. So, of course, they're in space somewhere love that on purple the, thank you thank you there's they're on the moon so there's the craters so let's go ahead add some stars there there's the moon and more stars and some moon shadows and uh and then the text so the text came last hmm. so there we go boom we got our character and um just out of curiosity what font is that that you've used because it's really cool to me Mm hmm. It's I think it's an Adobe font. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see what it is. 
a monstro nuova. Somebody. I love that. Learn to pronounce that. <laughs> that sounds like a super villain name, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. A monstro nuova. Yes. It's it was foretold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I like using Adobe fonts because then as I move through the illustration and between devices, which is another uh, part of the conversation today, is mm -hmm. that I save this to my iPad, it saves to the Creative Cloud, and then later I can open this up in Illustrator on my desktop and keep working on it once I'm sitting at my desk, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and I can really um, go further with the options that Illustrator provides and gradients, opacity, and all kinds of extras that um, really makes the artwork really pop. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna peek over here at the chat just to make sure that we're yeah. not leaving anybody out just in case we got questions. Um, lots of friends in the chat today. We got Price, we got Gareth, Misty, Becca, it's good to see you. Um, Alessandra, it's good to see you. Axel, welcome in. Yurio, uh, RB, Cody Bear, the one and only is moderating for us today. Uh, so it's good to see you in here, Cody. I see Steve Kasabooms. Good to see you, man. Um, and John, uh, Bruce, welcome in, everyone. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, we're kind of going over here a lot of the steps and things um, that he takes to kind of customize elements of his brush and stuff as he gets ready to create a piece. Um, so if anybody um, has any questions about that or um, uh, if you guys actually do a step like this in your own process, but you do it differently, share how you use uh, Illustrator for iPad um, mm -hmm. in the chat, because I always like to see how people achieve the same goal with different methods. That's always like really eye-opening. Um, so let us know in the chat. Um, as I said, if you have questions, let us know what you're working on. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us know where you're tuning in from, all that good info. Um, and yeah, I'm uh, seeing this gorgeous gradient come in yeah. um, over here. And I I am biased when it comes to purple. I really am. <laughs> oh, but yeah. I do think that uh -huh. these are great purples. <laughs> so I, I think they're still good purples, but I'm always going to vote for the purple. <laughs> there you go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Purples and blues is uh, where I go. Mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. and and then sometimes I need some red because I'm yeah. still working on the drawing and I yeah. need to see what my new edits are going to be. Uh, and so, yeah. it's funny mm -hmm. to tell people like I love purple. I always use purple. Purple is great. Do you use anything else? Blue and red. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, because that's different. <laughs> right. That because that makes purple. Yeah. That's why. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's what I started with uh, earlier today. I have the body template and then I, I just made up a name for the the body and I call it body template. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that Self explanatory. Me. Yeah, yeah, right to yeah. The point. Love it. And, and then uh and then I make sure I wrote down some notes mm -hmm. as to the brush that I'm using, you know. So it's the basic round, as I explained earlier. Let's go ahead and tap it. There it is, basic round. And uh and I didn't write down what size it was, but three is where uh, I, I happen to to get the right mix of thick and thin and I did keep the taper. So let's go back. Boom. Oh, no, no, no taper. That's why that line is says uh, it's just black. Minus yep. taper. And then right. And then the pressure dynamics, I did keep it around 75 percent. And and this helps me remind myself, OK, mm -hmm. uh, and this is I'm not showing you like the five other body template drawings that I did to get here because they were off. There was little things that I wasn't happy about. So when I finally hit on something that I like, I was like, OK, let me write down some notes so that when I come back and I don't I don't have to remember, it's right there. It's in mm -hmm. the drawing. <laughs> yeah, I, I leave notes for myself and in, in my art all the time. In fact, um, after like if I take a break, you know, put it away until tomorrow, you know, to come back in the morning. Usually mm -hmm. what I do is I make a new layer um, and then in bright red, I'll like put little arrows where it's like, you know, bring this edge in here tomorrow, try mm -hmm. blue, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. The only problem is uh, I accidentally left my notes in when I sent um, a Photoshop file to a client one time. They were very confused. <laughs> so make sure you remove that before you yeah. send it off. But uh -huh. um, leaving notes for yourself is a great way to stay on target. Um, 
stay on track with your with your piece so that's great that you take notes and leave you, yourself some some little things there yep yep that's right or you can write them out here write them here yeah you know outside of the artboard yeah uh, it's still confusing but the, i do that a lot especially like with the font before i turn the fonts into paths mm -hmm. i go ahead and uh, write the name of the font and have an example of what that font looks like mm -hmm. outside of the artboard so that anytime i open the file my info is right there yeah yes, good thinking yes. good thinking yeah. You gotta have notes to yourself I mean, and that's yeah. a great point just for um like in general obviously but i think something it, it makes it really important really valuable for a project like this because you're setting up kind of to create this whole series mm -hmm. you're going to be doing multiple um installations for this concept um, and mm -hmm. when you're finished when you get to the end of the line here you want people to be able to look at the full breadth and body of work that you've created and see that it's consistent all across the board exactly um, you want the art to look like it goes together mm -hmm. that's right mm -hmm. yeah and one thing that happened a year ago when i started another project the scullies is that I had other artists who liked what I was doing and they decided that they wanted to join in. Mm -hmm. And so I had to uh, create rules about mm -hmm. how we do the artwork. And I reminded yeah. about some artwork that I saw for The Simpsons a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And they had these all these notes inside of the character art that told you about how to do the teeth, the eyes and what not to do and what's not okay. And so, and, and so if you want the artwork to look consistent across the whole project, which, it, which you kind of do want that, mm -hmm. um, then uh, do you have to have some of these guidelines? Yeah, everybody's got to be on the same page. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So right after this, uh, the body template, I went ahead and started drawing this outline. There it goes. Once I start drawing the outline, I can turn off the body template. There we go. Turn it off. And as you can see, here's where I start using uh, some of these different line weights. And so, as you mentioned earlier, the thicker line weights is always on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I can always make adjustments. Let me see. Boom. Touch it. There it is. Let me uh, lock it in. There we go. And, uh, and then I can double check my pressure. And I can go really high to see, see how that looks. There we go. Okay. Okay. Nice. Let me, let me go down to two. All right. And so now when I press a little bit extra, then I get a thicker line mm -hmm. and I can make that line thicker all the way around. One of the things that I try to do in my process is to go ahead and get the drawing, get the lines that I want. And then if I need to, I can come back and add that extra thickness to it. You know, you are so like good at throwing in these lines. And I have to say, watching you ink things is like very satisfying it's like those like the satisfying videos you see on youtube where you can watch it for hours and just feel <laughs> great you know yeah yeah thank you thank it's you so buttery smooth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and this is why i tell people you should sit down and have a stable place to draw on mm. because that's how you're going to get that control in your wrist and your elbow and your shoulder with your body and uh and if, so if your body's all crooked and you're trying to draw mm -hmm. it, it adds extra strain to your hand your knuckles are gonna hurt mm -hmm. your hand will 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 complain later yeah um i i messed up my shoulder once uh because i was not sitting with good posture i didn't have enough like support um mm -hmm. and i think that maybe uh you know unless you think about it or look at it closely you would not assume that like drawing for a living or drawing as a <laughs> regular hobby would yeah. like be so strenuous on the body, mm -hmm. but it really is because mm -hmm. everything in your body's connected. And if you, you know, don't have that support where you need it, um, it can lead to other things. Um, I would love to point out, and I should probably have this link, um, prepared, uh, at all times, but I'm going to find it. I got myself a little um, armrest for my desk, which has worked wonders mm. um, for uh, what you're talking about, um, like the arm support and like sitting at the desk and, and everything. And it's actually mm -hmm. an armrest that I can put. Um, I have an L shaped desk, but it would work if you just have like a straight rectangle desk um, okay. and it clips to the side. 
and it has a little rest for me to put my elbow in, but mm -hmm. it rotates around mm. um, and I can pull it so that it moves um, in different directions if I need it to. Um, and it also can lift up higher or lift down lower. So mm -hmm. I can place it, place my elbow in it. And like it's in, it's in, it's in it right now. You can only really see my hand moving, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but I can move my entire arm with me instead of like, you know, and, and give it a rest while I'm painting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then it also allows me to sit up with good posture and rest my elbow very comfortably. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm gonna find that link and I'm gonna link it because um, for me, that has really helped. Um, and I think it kind of goes with um, sitting in, in, a, in a healthy position, you know, yeah. like you're talking about um, while you're working. So let me find that while you um, work on these tasty lines here yes. that I'm loving. So does your chair not have uh, um, uh, arm rests? Um, it does have armrests, but this is the this is the thing. And maybe we can um, talk about this a little bit too. Um, I feel like I can't just get like a particular kind of chair for mm -hmm. my workspace because I do live streaming as a portion of my job. And sometimes there's different requirements for what can and cannot be shown um, on the screen for certain companies and certain productions. Mm -hmm. So I, instead of having like multiple chairs, I can interchange, I opted for a chair where the back and the arms mm. don't come up very high. So that oh. if I need to be green screened, you can only see like from the collarbone up, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. my chair has ended up not really being a very ergonomic chair. And I'm probably slacking a little bit on finding a better one um, for my arm <laughs> and stuff. But what I've opted for instead of having a chair that has like a good rest built into it is it's got a comfortable seat, which is good for me. And if I sit up straight in it, I have my um, armrest for my hot key arm over mm. here on my left. And then mm -hmm. I have um, an mm -hmm. armrest on the other side of my desk for my mouse and stylus arm gotcha. as well um, on the right side, which works for me. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. But uh, okay. what about you? Do you have like a like an ergonomic chair? Yes. Uh, it's not one of the big, fancy, expensive ones. Uh, it's uh, it, but it did cost a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a sleepy something. Uh, it's like a, it's, it was made by a company that makes those uh, comfortable uh, bed mattresses. Ooh. Uh, Beauty Rest or something like that. And my wife nice. bought, we got one for my wife and she was super happy with it. And I said, well, you know, I need something too. And every year or two, we buy another chair and another chair and another chair. And once you start looking at the cost of a chair, and uh, the long term, you know, and you buy several cheap chairs, yeah. they add up to what you will spend on a higher end chair. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I had a because um, I, I was gaming on Twitch for a lot of years and I had like a like a gaming chair, like, an, a, you know, because that's I feel like that's what they tell you to get. You mm -hmm. know, when you stream on Twitch, they're like, you're going to need the racing chair. Um, <laughs> the thing is, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's always great to invest in, especially if you're sitting or, you you know, even even if this, you know, doing artwork is not your day job. Um, mm -hmm. If you have this hobby um, and you and so you sit at your desk for a lot of hours kind of working, it's it's a good idea to maybe at some point invest in a good chair. Um, but I feel like the racing chairs are not as good as people say they are because mm -hmm. I got that racing chair and mm -hmm. I was just like, I feel like I'm being forced to sit like board straight and it wasn't actually very comfortable. So I ended up giving mm -hmm. it to my brother. Um, and then after <laughs> that, I was just like, I'm going to invest in padded arm things right because right. <laughs> i don't know i don't know but if anybody has suggestions for um chairs that they've tried um throw those in chat um honestly anything that you folks have peripheral in your workspace that you find have made art life um a lot more comfortable for you share with us yeah. um because i feel like we could probably learn um some cool things and i did yeah. put the armrest in the chat by the mm -hmm. way so um mm -hmm. Uh, there you go. If you guys want to, and you mentioned out. this earlier, you said, uh, we, you know, we said a lot, we sit around a lot, you know, mm -hmm. so, so we have to get up and move and do other outside of the chair activities. Mm -hmm. But because you're going to sit in the chair for a long period of time, you should 
find that which is going to work for you, especially mm -hmm. when you're a professional and you know you're going to be hours. No matter how many breaks you take, your body and your uh, man, my mm -hmm. behind sometimes, I feel like I, I don't have any left. Yep. 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 <laughs> it's I, gone. You, know, you know what I get a lot? Um, and it's it's posture and stuff. And I'm sure a lot of other people in chat have experienced this. I'm sure you've experienced this. Um, and maybe there's some, I'm going to say it because maybe some people don't know that it's due to the art life sometimes, mm -hmm. but I get really bad pain in like the mm -hmm. top of my shoulders and my neck because mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like staring down. I got, you know, my my chin to my collarbone all the time yep. and I'll hunch. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that top of my, my back there into my neck, into my shoulders and, and everything, um, it gets sore. Um, mm -hmm. And so I have to keep in mind that my posture um, while I'm working really does come into play physically, as you, as you mentioned earlier, it's very important. Um, but I, I get those aches and pains. Um, I'm getting old, but it's not just cause I'm getting old. It's cause I need to sit up straight. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> you know so yeah. um mm -hmm. you know it, it affects you it affects you i saw your question bruce we're gonna get to it in a minute yeah. um so i have these little eight pound weights next to me mm. whenever you feel that tightness mm -hmm. in your shoulders and, and sometimes you don't notice it until later when you're twisting your neck you're looking at something and then that pain is like whoa what happened and yeah that's because you haven't stretched in a while so what i do is i grab the weights and i work out Right here on my t desk, I just stand up and I'm, I'm working my arms. I'm not trying to build up, I'm not mm -hmm. trying to get big muscles or nothing. It'd be nice, but that's not what yeah, it's I about. <laughs> I want to be She-Hulk, but I, you know, right, I don't yeah. think it's realistic for me, but I see what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and, so it's, and so I do it enough to loosen this up. You mm -hmm. got to loosen it up. And while you're work, raising your arms up with the dumbbells, mm -hmm. you move your head up high enough so that you, you really stretch out these muscles here. And, and loosen them up because they, they do sit a, a lot and they support your head, like you said, and you're kind of in this one position for a long period of time. So yeah, yeah. little weights are awesome. Um, and I, 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 I also, because of, you know, people like Ryan Selvey and, and Anna Davis court and all them, I have been doing monkey paws regularly. Also a really great thing to do is we use our, our, our fingers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, exercising, not just, you know, the, the, the arm muscles and, you know, uh, stretching your back and all that stuff, but like working on your, your fingers and your wrists, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because it all comes into play. Uh, yeah. and I was getting cramps in my hands and, yeah. and stuff because it was difficult, but keep yeah. that stuff in mind. Um, take I care think, of your body. uh, yes, take care of your body. Um, I think that you, uh, caught a question in here, um, yes. which I apologize, Bruce. I think that I, um, I didn't see that one there, uh, about keeping the line consistent there and connected. Is that in the settings? Uh, yes. And so, right. Yep. And that was Bruce. And so, um, so there's, so there's, uh, the line consistency right now. I just did that right now. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, playing with that since we've been talking, uh, about the chairs. So here's the, the lines that I'm drawing. And as you can see, no matter how hard I press or not look or not even, uh, worry about my, where my hand is, it's going to mm -hmm. keep that line consistency the same. And I wanted that for these tattoos because the tattoo artist must mm. have tattoos. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so. So that's one thing that I did. I also turned down the brush size to one and I turned off the pressure dynamics. The other part is um, you're asking is about um, connecting. Do, do these, do these uh, blah brush connect this one brush stroke? Will, will it connect to the other? And I have my settings set to where it does connect. As soon as you draw over a line that's already there, then it becomes a bigger shape. Mm. And uh, and that is also in here. So oh, there it is. Merge brush strokes on the bottom right here. There it nice, is. Nice, nice. Merge brush strokes. And so it depends on what you're after. Now, there's an artist, uh, Orlando Arocena, mm -hmm. uh, AKA Mexi Punk. Like that guy's skills. If I, if I could just touch him one day and I, his skills will transfer to yeah me. maybe <laughs> maybe it'll rub off <laughs> yeah that's it if i could just catch up with him one day so we and, breathe and the same him. air and maybe i'll yeah <laughs> it, it, <laughs> i know it that would, feeling <laughs> mm -hmm, we'll transfer some energy but uh and so when sometimes you do want it off mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And let me just uh, go here, get rid of that. Come on, come on, Illustrator. If I go too fast, things don't work out. So you gotta slow down, be calm. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in any case, here he goes, the brush. So there's one brush stroke, there's another and then another. And, uh, and, and so right now, these are all individual pieces. Mm -hmm. But as you're drawing and filling in a particular area, it'll retain your brush strokes. Okay. And so in on Illustrator on the desktop, which we will make a jump sometime today, when you grab all of these brush strokes and, and turn on the gradient and use the gradient mm -hmm. to, to color it, then you're going to get all these different cool yeah. looking little uh, whiffs mm -hmm. of your brush strokes. And you sometimes you want to retain them. You want them to be there yeah. because it adds an extra element to your drawing. And I mentioned that artist makes it fun because that's he doesn't use that technique to do the gradients, but that's how he draws in Illustrator. He uses a lot of shapes. Everything has a gradient and it builds up the image. And so I pretend that I'm like him sometimes. And this is what I do. <laughs> to get that <laughs> i do that i do that sometimes uh with uh cody bear where i'm drawing some cute animals and i'm like i'm just gonna pretend i'm her I'm that's just, right i'm cody bear right now <laughs> right. I, but i don't that's a real feeling though right when you mm -hmm. you're inspired you're so inspired by somebody's art and you try to kind of channel you know that yep. energy into your work i think that's a great a, a great way to be a great thing to do kind of learn from artists and 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 let that inspiration come to you and fuel uh fuel a piece right exactly and and that's really you know at some point in our lives we we saw some artwork somewhere mm -hmm. and uh and said to ourselves i wonder what that would look like if i try to draw it yep that's yep. it and, and that's how it all starts Mm -hmm. you know and so don't let go of that feeling ever never never it's mm -hmm. it's uh it, it's i think um one of the biggest things for me um and i don't know if this is if this is something that everybody feels i'm sure i'm sure you know i'm not the only one i can't be the only one but one of the things that really inspires me when i see other people's art sometimes is like not so much the subject matter of the art it's the atmosphere they achieved with the color palette mm -hmm. they use and i'm like oh man I don't know what I'm going to draw with these colors, but I got to use this color palette mm -hmm. for something. And then I'm, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that comes to me all the time. Um, I'm sure no one's surprised that it's like always shades of purple, <laughs> right? <laughs> which maybe I just need to look at some art that doesn't have purple in it. Maybe that'll change, maybe that'll change it up. But, um, yeah. if, if you like blue and purple, um, and you use a lot of blue and purple, then I feel like, um, I'll change my, my purple ways when you do. Um, right <laughs> you know, right that's what we we'll right. do um, yeah and, and and that's it that you're looking at inspirations like i didn't know you could do that with purple <laughs> yeah 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 i i think what i really like to do at some point is try to achieve like a look of iridescence mm -hmm. with shades of like purple and pink um and i've seen some people do it i have a like I'm just like blown away by people who um, do like very clean vector art and there's no, cause I, you know, I'm mostly a painter. So I do a lot of blending and, mm -hmm. and, and painting, but um, using sharp shapes and shades of color, shades of purple and pink to make something appear iridescent, like a mermaid scale or something mm -hmm. like that, like that kind of color combo to give it like this material, sort of vibe is really inspiring to me mm -hmm. and so um i'd love to know in chat uh if there's any any colors that doesn't have to be your favorite color but any color or color combo that like you see something done in those colors and you're like i have to make something right now what are those colors mm -hmm. and combos for you guys in the chat let us know Yep. Um, and then I also, I think somebody asked if I was right or left-handed. I am right-handed and I think that the camera could be flipped. So this hand that I'm raising, this is my left hand, which I think it looks like the right for those of you watching. Um, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's your right hand. This yeah, is my left weird. hand. This oh, is my left, left hand. hand. Okay, okay, but, okay. But I think right. it's flipped on Behance. Oh, the, I see. The, the broadcast. Because yeah. when you were talking about the the armrest, you kept using that hand. Yeah, moving so it around. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> do my that's that's what I look like when I draw and you guys can't see me. I'm pop locking in my seat and doing uh-huh. the that's, you know. I thought you were doing some uh karate art. I was just trying to dance for you, you know. You I was go. just trying to like get the get my groove on and mm-hmm. get everybody pumped about this art stream. <laughs> um let's see. Nice. Some folks talking about using a foot rest. I have a foot rest. I do have a foot rest because I think it's um, now everybody's body's different. Everybody has uh, different ways that it would be maybe healthy for them to sit. But I feel like generally, if you're sitting at your desk all the time, it's always great to have a foot rest or have your chair at a certain level where um, your legs, like from your hip joints to your knees, is perfectly straight mm. across. Because when your um, the backs of your thighs um, hit the the you know the seat of your chair and your mm-hmm. knees are lower than your hips that mm. can um over time it's possible to you know have some issues with circulation and stuff and if you're sitting at your desk for 10 hours a day some of us um mm-hmm. you know it's it's good to have a foot rest keep that you know that uh that straight line from hip to knee if possible um is a, a good idea yep um a lot of love in the chat for mexifunk uh yes I, I'm gonna have to check out this artist because I don't think I've heard of, or maybe I've seen the art and just didn't mm-hmm. know the name. You, yeah, you've seen him. He's uh, done presentations on, uh, here at Adobe. Oh yeah. And Adobe Max and uh. Oh. Oh wow. my God, that dude, that dude right there. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow! <laughs> I've seen some of this, but now I'm looking at like the full breadth of work, mm-hmm. and this is mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Yep, he's taking Illustrator to a whole other level. He made, he, oh, he re- did like a repaint of the Mona Lisa and it's way cooler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's done a ton of art, Star Wars art. So you, you want to, I'm on seeing that. it. And mm-hmm. I'm, again, I'm biased, but this is some darn good Star Wars art. This is exceptional. Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah, that's good stuff. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this with me. Um, this You're is welcome. another another artist that i will give all my money to (laughs) that's right yeah give me more posters sir that's right (laughs) (laughs) yeah let's see if i can get this right there we go come on i think i missed on my uh, color go ahead uriel in chat um yeah if you know what you probably can't message me on um discord because i'm appearing offline um uriel so i will if uh, i think that your name is the same um, on Discord, correct? Let me know. I'll send you a DM on Discord. Um, sorry about that. I usually, if I'm not um, doing a DCC, I appear offline on the Discord. <laughs> I do. Um, so I will um, make sure you can get a hold of me. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm loving that you're adding like different layers of value here um, yes. in, in the piece. Um, and so are you actually changing the color here or are you using different opacity of the layers? Both this? different colors of blue, mm-hmm. um, and changing the opacity within the layer. So that way I, I have the, a darker shadow or a lighter shadow. It depends on the mood that I want to give it at this time. Um, nice. but, but I went with a single color so that I don't have to fight myself over colors when i'm live because yeah and i really get out of whack and don't know what to say when it doesn't yeah. look the way you want it to look <laughs> i i mean i do i kind of do a similar thing when i mm-hmm. when i paint because i paint in grayscale which i feel like this is like blue scale you right. know and when you mm-hmm. choose like one hue or one um range of value to Mm -hmm. use um to define a piece and create the piece then the colors can come in after and then you're not solving those problems at the same time right you know you're not developing your piece and choosing dynamic colors Mm -hmm. as you go um on the you know on the same journey you can kind of separate those and that works that works better for me personally yes yes exactly so that's why uh i chose the blue and I said, if I sit there, you know, this one was simple because it's a, it's an astronaut. So you can only go so many colors with the spacesuit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I chose a couple of cool colors here. I like, dang, you know, I, I want it to be brown. <laughs> I want to, you know, it's like, OK, OK, OK. So um, so that's why, yeah, I went with this color. Keep it simple. And I agree that sometimes you just want to focus on one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. And that's how it is with my art. Sometimes I find the 
the colors first and I work with the colors. And sometimes mm -hmm. I find the shadows and values uh, first and I go with that. I try not to stress myself out. You should enjoy drawing. You should, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, taking regular breaks and finding a great process that feels natural to you is a great way to um, continue to enjoy art um, right. as you go along. And um, mm -hmm. maybe we can talk about, because uh, I would love to, to hear just like kind of from your perspective, um, something that I think is important to be aware of, like as you um, you know, if you're, if you're going, uh, from being a hobbyist to like pursuing art as a career, um, I kind of learned the hard way that I love art. I want to do art for the rest of my life. I'm going to do art till my arms don't work, mm -hmm. you know, but when mm -hmm. you pursue art as a career, there does come a time where, you know, you're working on art and you're not into it you're not feeling it because mm -hmm. it's you know it is a job and so you we get to do this wonderful amazing thing for a living but you know sometimes you can burn out or sometimes you can you, you know you get bored with a project but you know you're it's client work so you got to do it um how do you uh kind of keep the the creative juices flowing and mm -hmm. like really stay um into your work um when you kind of come to those points where you're just not really feeling it like you were a day or so ago right 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 well um sometimes the motivation comes from when my wife says you can't buy that because it's not in the budget <laughs> and i'm like what hold on let me go what find what you that. mean <laughs> <laughs> let me go finish this project so i can get my uh, balance paid off and i have extra <laughs> cash you know right <laughs> yeah <laughs> But no, um, no, I think that uh, my my way has been, um, fortunately for me, I, I have um, established my career in a way where uh, clients come to me and I am able to choose the project I want to work on and mold that creativity to where I know I'm challenged enough in the project that I'm, I'm going to stay on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other part is uh, sometimes... Uh, here's an example of that is uh i've worked on uh, children's books or children's artwork mm. and uh i think i at one time my wife and i we uh, worked together on an art project where um she we we she likes taking pictures of photo of um of flowers mm -hmm. and uh and i did some astic goddesses and so i took the flat pictures of flowers and and did a painting where it was all together right nice Oh, yeah. And so, but a day after or a week after painting flowers, you know, you kind of, that's not my normal natural yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and Get so that's tired of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like another flower. And so then that's when, <laughs> <Again? laughs> so then that's when I, I, I take a, a moment, an hour or two to draw some skulls. Mm. So somewhere, yeah. you know, somewhere because and I am also not going into a job where I'm sitting at a desk at somebody's mm -hmm. desk doing this work. I'm, I'm I work on my own pace. It can be nighttime, daytime mm -hmm. and so on. And so so then I can take a break from the drawing that I'm supposed to be working on and say, you know what? I'm for the next hour or two. I'm going to watch Judge Judy and I'm going to draw some skulls. We just became best friends. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> Judge Judy. <laughs> Judge Judy. That's Judge right. Judge Judy. I, I watch all those. I watch all those shows like Divorce Court and everything. That's if the, if I don't have Star Wars or like a sci science fiction fantasy audiobook playing in the background while I'm working, you you can bet that I have mm -hmm. um, Judge Judy yeah. um, or Divorce Court on in the background. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. I want to know what everybody's. Uh, like working show is too. What what do you guys have on in the background? Be it music, uh, audio book, podcast, TV show, movie. What do you guys have on? Mm -hmm. I and, um mm -hmm. I okay. actually I did a painting of Judge Lynn Toller. Um, oh, wow. One time, and I just like posted it, and she retweeted it, and I was like, I can die happy now. Yeah. <laughs> I, can yeah. Die. Yeah. I love you. You're uh -huh. great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I think that the, the key in, in what you're saying and what I'm saying is that we have to remember those things that inspire us. We have yeah. to remember those things that brought you into art. 
And I've, I've been through that path where you're burnt out. Mm -hmm. You're burnt out. I don't want to draw anything people ask me to do. I was a tattoo artist for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've drawn plenty of, of uh, roses, Black Panthers, crosses, names, hearts. I've done uh, hundreds of those variations of the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to draw that anymore. And so, so you is it I, that burnout is real and what you don't want to do is not enjoy drawing anymore or creating mm. yeah you don't want to get to the point where you don't want to do it anymore and, and so so i said no no there was something that brought me into art there was something that brought me into drawing mm -hmm. what is that and let me focus on that only and so yeah sometimes we work on a project that's not um kind of what you really want to do or after a while you're kind of tired of looking at it that happens to me like mm -hmm. a week after looking at the same drawing, like, dang, I'm still working on this thing. Mm -hmm. And so and so don't let that burnout build up to where you walk away from it. Yeah. Catch it. Catch it mm -hmm. early. Mm -hmm. Start, you know, recognize the signs. Another thing that can help sort of negate and, and kind of keep that um, at bay uh, is knowing your own limits as an artist and not mm -hmm. taking on so much work that you doom yourself right. to you know kind of burning out because i i've i have done that before and i'm sure a lot of other people have been there and kind of learned that the hard way sometimes we burn out because we have so much work to do and we have like these massive projects and sometimes we burn out because not only do we have a massive project to work on we signed up for three of them yeah you know and it's like mm -hmm. that that can be tough and so um you know looking back on your experience you know no matter how how much or how little um and trying to be honest with yourself about how much work you can take on at once and and how much mm -hmm. you can be responsible for mm -hmm. um and not taking on so much that you put yourself in the position where you're gonna kind of go crazy looking at the same art or doing mm -hmm so much um, right. can also help uh, sort of keep that at bay mm -hmm. healthy choices that's healthy right choices. and spend time with your family you know yes I'm, I'm a i'm a i'm a i'm big into grinding like i'll sit down and grind and, and work through a project work through a drawing if i feel it if i have that inspiration i'm gonna do it mm -hmm. but you know at the same time uh, I, I i don't want that burnout and there are other people in my life yeah and so, so fine. It's not going to be an equal balance where there's two days a week for this, two days a week for that, and two days, two days, two days. It's never going to be like that, a, a, a perfect balance. But you want to find those times where you can relax, breathe, just enjoy the day, enjoy yourself, enjoy video games, enjoy TV shows, whatever anime you like, wherever you can break away from that, that uh, stress, because you can get stressed out when drawing and, uh, it, enjoy your family enjoy some time and that will also help a lot yeah i agree mm -hmm. i agree you um cool, so cool, you cool. have kind of um gone from placing in uh, a lot of these levels of value into kind of breaking their shape a little bit with mm -hmm. um some some details like you have under that arm um, instead of it being kind of a flat shape you've added these lovely lines to kind of give it a little bit of depth yeah there. Mm -hmm. um, and i love it yep thank you yeah. thank you that's why i did it i did it so you would love it <laughs> <laughs> my job is done thank you everybody success <laughs> yes yeah you want to uh break it up and add some texture just so that it is it is uh it looks different than the other parts so like that might be a shirt or something so that texture that shirt might be different than the the texture of the gloves you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a great point because if you're working with vector and you're working, you know, a lot of your lines are the same, it's going to be a, a much different method of conveying material from element mm -hmm. to element than mm -hmm. somebody who's um, painting with pixel brushes, you know, so this is, uh, that's a really good point. Like you can kind of um, show material, even though mm -hmm. you're using the same um, brush for all of it with the kind of details you add for depth and various areas. That's right. Good yep. point. Good and, point. And, and that's like, that, that happens in comics, uh, you know, because they're only using the ink brush mm -hmm. and then after a while colors to, to bring out the difference, uh, between the skin of Aquaman and then the suit, yeah. the Aquaman suit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you want those differences. 
Um, so I Sophia do a little bit. Jones is asking, do you have any advice for a student graphic designer? Um, are you maybe maybe with that, Sophia, you can kind of um, give us some insight into um, where you see yourself in the future, like what your goal is and where you're moving from, because I feel like there's a, a, a lot of graphic design students out there who have a completely different path laid out before them to, mm -hmm. you know, what they want to do. So what what do you what kind of design do you want to get into in the future and what are you working towards? Mm -hmm. And uh, and as you take the time to answer that, uh, the the first thing I will say to anybody, and this is anybody, not just graphic design, is uh, draw what you like mm -hmm. and put that in your portfolio. Yeah. What you'd like to draw, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, now you can challenge yourself and draw stuff that uh, you're not always interested in drawing or getting paid to do. But whatever shows up in your portfolio, people re will reach out to you for that. Yes. So don't put things that you that you were just testing out this one idea and uh, don't put it on your portfolio because then people might start uh, calling you for those dog portraits mm -hmm. and you're like, I only drew the dog one time. Yeah, I don't want to draw your dogs <laughs> every day. Please don't. Yeah. I, I that is such a mood, big mood, uh, mm -hmm. though, because if you really have to put in your portfolio, what what do you want to get hired for? Mm -hmm. What, you know, where, when you think of yourself, you know, years down the line, fully into, you know, your career, what are, what kind of projects do you imagine that you're doing that will, you know, really fulfill you mm -hmm. um, and do, even if you have to do passion projects, cause you're not finding the client work for it, mm -hmm. put that work in your portfolio. Um, I, I put a lot of stuff in my portfolio early on um, that just cause I had finished a project um, I actually ended up designing websites for years and years. Mm -hmm. That's what people like came to me uh, for. And I cannot tell you how much I hate designing websites, man. <laughs> I hate doing it. I hate doing it so much. And that was like my main source of income for uh -huh. over a year. And, uh -huh. but that's all I had in my portfolio. That's all I was showing people I could do. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, as he says, put put what you're passionate about into yep. your portfolio because what people see is what they're gonna ask you for. Right, there you go. That's right. Yeah, we I think all graphic designers at one point or another, uh, or artists and have, have gotten into web design. I did web design for a long time and uh, I got tired of it. I got tired of it. I won't touch it anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, that is uh, something that because you can draw, people expect that you can do logos and websites and apps <laughs> that i think that that's yeah i think that one of the main questions that i get asked is somebody will say hey can you design me a logo i can mm -hmm. i can totally design somebody a logo but that's not my passion you know right. i've had i've actually designed a few um uh, a couple of tattoos um, okay so far so i have done that but the list of people on the planet that i will do a tattoo for i can count on one hand Mm -hmm. And most of them are related to me because that scares me to like do a tattoo for somebody like, mm -hmm. you know, somebody, especially somebody I don't know. That's like, Hey, you know, can you do this drawing? And I'm going to put it on my body forever and yeah. ever <laughs> and ever. And it's like, bro, I paint something and post it to Instagram. And in the morning I look at it and wonder what the heck I've done. No. <laughs> you know what have i done and so i don't you know the idea of somebody walking around on planet earth with a piece of art that i did five years ago um scares me yeah. a lot you know mm. some people can do it though you know like we're doing yeah. the, the tattoo artist art lifer right now you know for some some mm -hmm. people that's their passion um mm -hmm. but i feel like tattoos is one of the one of the the jobs that people ask me for sometimes where i'm like no <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, i can't do right. it I don't want to put any tattoos in my portfolio and give people the wrong idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, uh, what you, so, so what you do is you put your name on it. Like mm. here's your tattoo design. It's got your name all mm -hmm. big. All um, yeah. I mean, yeah. A part of the you artwork. <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't always work though, because I had somebody tattooed my business logo <laughs> on them. Wow. Uh, so yeah. And it, so there is a, there is a person out there with the, uh, Voodoo Val logo tattoo. Wow. On them. So I put like all of me in the logo and someone still was like, you know what? That's cool enough. 
Yeah, like I'll, I'll roll with Let's that. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> Uh, he's a delightful human being um, and uh, a huge supporter of my art. Uh -huh. So um, I take it as a compliment, but it still s scared me good and proper. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wow. was like, I hope that you really like the logo because I, I, you know, I think we always look at our art from the past sometimes and think, mm, I think I could do that better now. Right. You right, know, and that's right. the thing. What um, you were kind of talking about earlier, speaking of like jobs we, we like to do and jobs uh, we, we uh, are less fond of doing and stuff. Um, maybe you could share a little bit about um, kind of your journey um, to where you are now and um, talk about some of the other maybe non-art related jobs you've had. Um, and then also specifically like some jobs that you art jobs that you had to do like to get mm -hmm. by and, and mm -hmm. get going that you didn't enjoy too much, but was like part of the process. Right. So jobs that were not art, that's the first part, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was, I was a forklift driver for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I mean, I was so hardcore with it. I got a forklift driving license. Like oh, there's wow. a course you can take and, yeah. and you're certified or something and you have a, a real license. And, uh, and that's just manual labor. I was uh, fresh out of the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any real um, skills that, that were not labor, you know, manual labor related. Mm -hmm. And so, so, I, so I did it, you know, I did it. You have to pay bills, you have to do what you gotta do. And, uh, and so that was uh, one of those jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I, then I, I worked at a steel company for okay. some time. And those were the days where my arms were huge mm -hmm. not by by accident i wasn't <laughs> trying to be popeye it was mm -hmm. just by accident because that's some hard work mm -hmm. oh yeah oh and, yeah and so so you know you do what you have to do and and in the meantime you're 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 building your portfolio you try i was trying to figure out what kind of artist i was going to be i did not know i never went to college i never went to school for art i didn't understand that there are many different types of art careers and so on. So mm -hmm. I was just kind of just rolling around with it and, uh, and, and trying to figure out what I, how I was going to break into art and make art my thing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so then after that, I worked at, uh, as a cook. I, I started as a, uh, as a prep cook. Okay. And, um, and so the prep cook supports the, the main chefs and the cooks, the main cooks. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so the, your job is to... Uh, let me go ahead and save that for a minute. Uh, your job is to uh, do all the chopping and yeah, yeah. cutting and so on. And like so it was cool. kind of yeah. and like support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your job is to support. And so I, I enjoy cooking, though. I do like the kitchen. And mm -hmm. so and even washing dishes, I'm OK with that, too, because mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. It was just something about the kitchen and putting things together and then you get to eat it. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yes. I like cooking as well. Um, so. <laughs> It's, it's, um, I, I know that feeling like, cause it, mm -hmm. and it's kind of, it's, it's, it's an art form in and of itself, right? Being able to, yeah. to support or contribute to preparing a meal, giving yep. life to people on planet earth is good mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're putting things together that, you know, you would never think that they go together. Yeah. And, uh, and next thing you know, like that's delicious. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's when I got chunky again. <laughs> uh, I went from a, a steel company to the kitchen. And I got chunky again because I used to help the the baker lady too. Mm -hmm. And so uh, cheesecake when it was time to cut the cheesecake because we were a catering company, mm. and so you had to ch cut the cheesecake into little uh, hand, you know, little uh, finger mm -hmm. size. Oh like, my like god! Like cheesecake bites? That's dangerous. Yes, yes, that's dangerous, man. Yes. That's because I love yes. me some cheesecake. <laughs> and so, so you cut it wrong, so you end up with a lot of extra cheesecake they're not gonna use. That's mm -hmm. the cheesecake you eat. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that's you know what? I feel like I would be in the kitchen like, oops, uh, something went wrong with yep. this part of the, you know, with this cheesecake mm -hmm. bite and this cheesecake bite. But don't worry, I'm the cleanup. That's mm -hmm. you know, that's my job as I clean up all the undesirable cheesecake bites. I mm -hmm. got you. I'll get that. Um, I'll get rid of that. I got cheesecake it. I got support. It. That's right. Uh, <laughs> that's my yep. job title. And so, uh, so yeah, so those were a couple of my jobs that I did as, um, uh, as, as I was figuring out what I was going, what was I going to do with art? How mm -hmm. was I going to make art my life? And then when I started my art career, I was, you know, I, I was drawing logos and designs and this is a long, long time ago. 
-hmm. and uh, and so I would so to me a logo was just a drawing like and mm -hmm. I did logos for clubs Atlanta was a big club party city mm -hmm. a long time ago really really crazy and so I would draw these logos for club promoters and uh and and I'll just hand them a sheet of paper with the drawing and that was it like there's your logo there you go you know yeah. and yeah I don't know nothing about illustrator there was nothing about vectors like here you go you y'all figured this out yeah and so uh and so so as time went on that's when um people around me got to know that uh that I really had talent that I could draw mm -hmm. and and one time I was hanging out with a friend of mine this is how my art career started for real for real okay I was just hanging out we weren't doing anything just uh just wasting the day away and I was riding around with him in his car and he pulls up into to a tattoo shop mm -hmm. and he we stop and he says go in there and I said what do you mean he says go in there and show them your work and I had never thought about being a tattoo artist I didn't think that was a a, a career move that I wanted but I had drawn tattoo designs for people already mm -hmm. and so I said well I'm not scared I'll go in and show them my work and so mm -hmm. I walked in there and said hello I started talking to them and this is back in the day when there was like one tattoo shop in the whole state of Georgia. Now there's wow. like, now there's like a hundred tattoo shops in every neighborhood. <laughs> and, and so they like my work. They're like, cool. What, you want to learn? We'll teach you. One of the trick questions was, do you like to hurt people? <laughs> and, uh, and I, I had been in the Marine Corps before. So I was like, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> and, uh, and they're like, cause tattoos hurt. I said, Oh, okay. Okay. In that case. Sure. Yeah. And so, so yeah, so they, they took me in and they started showing me some things and, uh, and man, um, I moved to a different tattoo shop after that. And I started to, um, the apprenticeship, I started nice. the apprenticeship. And, that's a lot uh, of, that's a lot of work. Yes. Doing tattoo yes. apprenticeship is no joke. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Cause you need volunteers Yeah, and, and, and they have to trust that you're going to do a good drawing. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm sure that's really nerve wracking for you because that's that's kind of mind blowing to me because I I would be scared, you know, maybe just to walk into like a a, a, a digital art company and be like, hi, I have a sketchbook with me, check it mm -hmm. out. And you're like, hi, I have a sketchbook with me. Can I put this on people? You yeah, know, right, and then, right. And then you do the apprenticeship and you're practicing. And then what was it like getting like? finding the very first person who volunteered to allow you to give them a, a tattoo like was that terrifying like to uh, do that on a real person for yes first time? it's it's scary that it, it's easy to find volunteers because if you, you, get free if you have friends right it's a free <laughs> tattoo but if you have friends uh and, and acquaintances that you can talk to and they know you have talent they're like okay well i like you i like your work i'll do that yeah i'll yeah. volunteer for that Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's unnerving because, you know, you got this 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 needle ee, going back and forth. Yeah. And then there's this person right there and you got to jab yeah. them on this. <laughs> that's crazy. That's like, you know, that's I think that that's why, like, I, I you know, like I said, there's a, some like every so often in rare, very rare occasions, I will design a tattoo. Um, but like, I don't want any hand in like the actual tattoo process. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of like you handing a sheet of paper to someone like, here's your logo. Goodbye. Right. I email them a file. There's your tattoo. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. <Good laughs> I don't luck. Wanna, I'm done. Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's yeah. wild. Mm -hmm. Um, so then how, you know, from, from, you know, doing tattoos, um, are you still, are you, uh, I, I forgive me. I don't, I actually don't know. Are you still doing tattoos? No, I'm um, kind of, I'm kind of retired. Uh, yeah. I haven't done any tattoos in a couple of years and it's going to take a lot of money for me to even do a tattoo again. Mm. Um, you know, and then, you know, the world changed. So it was very yeah. difficult to really just hang around with people yeah, and have yeah. people stopping by. And so, so yeah, I kind of just let it go. It's like, and, and, and when people can uh, contact me, people who have known me a long time, they're like, Dan, I, I'm ready for, uh, for another one. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm retired. I, I do have other people I send them to. Mm -hmm. My brother-in-law is a tattoo artist. I've trained a few people mm -hmm. myself and uh, they've been my apprentice. And so I, now I send them, I send any potential clients their way. Like, oh, yeah, that's okay. great. That's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Um, but how you then, you know, like from, from doing tattoos, have you then transitioned into where we sit today? You know, like how did yeah, that sort of Yeah, right. Okay. So that's the, the um, man, a lot of drawings, a lot of, a lot drawings, of drawings, 
a lot of drawings, you know, and and really it's uh stepping into what you really like. And it's it's taken me a long time because I, I started with um graphic design, mm -hmm. computers and graphic design and the web, designing for the web, and uh from tattooing and drawing to now designing. I had to understand the fundamentals of design, the mm -hmm. the um, principles of design, and uh, in and work on it. And it's the early days of the web wasn't hard to find a client because everybody needs a website, everybody wants to oh, have yeah. something online, yeah. and so so that was cool. So, um, but as time went on, I realized that I got tired of chasing clients or chasing the next gig mm -hmm. as a freelancer. You know, you're you're um you did a uh a, a, a website now you got to find another client for the Hunting next for website work. yeah you know yeah and i'm like yeah. you know what uh, and then uh you have to prove yourself and it's and then haggle with money and all that mm -hmm. stuff it's like you know what what i'm going to do is uh focus on the thing that i really really want now as at uh, one point between the um, tattooing and uh graphic design i did burn out on tattoos and uh and i stopped tattooing i just mm -hmm. stopped and uh and then but then six months later you know the only kind of people who contact me are the ones who want tattoos and yeah. so i say you know what i'm gonna go ahead and just focus on doing the kind of tattoos that i want to do and as time went on then i started to take on graphic design and that's when i got caught up in it again trying to do whatever people ask you to do yeah yeah and so i said no 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 and uh and so i decided to that because I wanted to just focus on drawing that I, and I like drawing people and characters mm -hmm. that I was just going to be a 2D illustrator. And, and it, it's not just a 2D illustrator, but I was going to focus really hard on just uh, on focus on drawing the things that I like to draw. Mm. And uh, and that's when I flipped my portfolio, got rid of my website portfolio, got rid of my logo portfolio, got rid of a ton of stuff and say just characters, just characters, just characters, because I know other people other artists have made this their career in the past mm -hmm. and if they've been successful and if they've been successful then that means i can be successful amen yes mm -hmm. so so now here's a here's a another extra bonus question for you this is a lot of steps <laughs> in the the journey of dtm you know right. like the the origin story of the, <laughs> the epic man we see with us here today um, is this the last step in the journey though? Is there something that you are passionate about that you have yet to do or yet oh. to accomplish? And, and what is, what is the future of like mm -hmm. where your journey is taking you? Are you doing only the stuff these days that you love to do? Or is there something missing that we might see one day? The creativity never stops. <laughs> the, the, That's what the, I like to hear. <laughs> yeah. The things that we want never stops. You know, I, uh, I, I, I want to, I have comic book ideas. I have animation ideas. I have mobile mm -hmm. game ideas. And so um, I can only do so much between my regular projects and, and client work. And so slowly I've been playing around with animation. I've been playing around with mobile games, um, comic book uh, stories. And so I have a, like two or three different universes. Yeah. That, uh, oh. that I want to make a comic book for, that I want to... Uh, make a mobile game for and then still do the animations that are going to be part of the game mm -hmm. and just do animation just to to try it out and yeah, play with it animation. Yeah. yeah and so you know i don't think i want to be an animator working uh for a company doing animations but i've already worked in projects like um my little mermaid is it my little mermaid yes uh years ago i worked on the my little mermaid um movie Oh, and so so I was one of the animators, but I actually I'm a to the illustrator, but they call me up, say, hey, Dan, we need your help with this wow. uh, Photoshop artwork. And I said, OK. And so I didn't have to do the animation, but I did have to work on the different layers in Photoshop wow. to make sure that the animator had what they needed. Yeah. And uh, and so I have a credit as an animator on a movie. Wow, that's um, amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah. So that's no, cool. it never stops. It never stops. Creativity does not sleep. It just keeps asking you for more and more of your time. 
so I just want to point out because I almost I almost burst out laughing just a moment ago. You were talking about you know creativity never stops. You you know you just kind of keep moving forward. And Bliss adds, a wise man once said, once said, don't stop, get it, get it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I just can't. <laughs> That's right. You guys stop. are great. Get it, get it. You guys are great. <laughs> you know. Mm-mm. Thank you, Bliss. Thank you, Bliss, for that. Um, but I, I, you know, I think that it's really great to kind of go through this. Not only is this like super on brand for like the project that you're working on today, like art lifers, but like, you know, what did, what did they do before art? What are they doing, you know, at the same time as they're doing their art and, mm-hmm. and, you know, the other aspects of their life, but also just to, you know, kind of give everybody in the chat kind of a glimpse um, into um, what, your life has been like and how it has transformed um because i think that uh a lot of people it's kind of a sentiment that i've seen in the chat a lot is people like thinking that if they're not supporting themselves 100 percent only with their art then they must not be professional enough or it must not you know they might they're not a like a real artist if they're mm-hmm. working a day job too and it's just simply not true you know there's right. so many different um things that a lot of people do to get to the point where they can support themselves um, with their art if that's what they're looking for Um, and people work day jobs at the same time and Mm -hmm. having a different job or having a path that is different than some other creatives as far as getting to the creative place that you want to be doesn't make you you know less of a professional artist or less of an artist in general you know people get there the way they get there Mm -hmm. um I, I myself, I had a lot of different jobs um, before I, you know, started doing artwork. Um, and I think actually, uh, um, if uh, Elle is still in chat, um, yeah, Alessandra had um, asked recently, you know, how how one finds themselves in a situation like streaming on Adobe Live and stuff. And I think that a lot of it in, in many ways like happens by by chance. You know, I was a, a cashier at a grocery store working nights like at the grocery store, the late shift at a, at a like a grocery outlet, okay. you know, and I was going to school for forensic anthropology. Wow. Um, because I, I love anthropology, all that stuff really interests me. And it dawned on me one day that I was like, the stuff that I was studying was uh, general interest, things that I would really love watching a documentary about, but mm-hmm. not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I had always been doing art, um, like since I was a kid. And I I remember, don't do what I did, I, I quit my job. Um, and like started pursuing art um, because I fell into the trap of thinking that, you know, if I was going to be doing, if I was, if I was serious about art, I needed to just focus on art. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, you have to pay your bills. <laughs> you gotta, right, right. <laughs> you gotta right. pay, you gotta pay your bills. Um, and there's nothing wrong with working another job um, at the same time as doing art. But um, I, I, I focused on my art. Um, I started streaming on Twitch um, and the rest is history. But, you know, a lot of us, a lot of people are doing other stuff. Um, and I think that too, you know, when you see other people post their art online, just like we can fool ourselves into thinking that so-and-so must not make any mistakes because his portfolio is flawless, mm-hmm. which is not true. Um, I think we also can fool ourselves into thinking that the artists that we admire are only doing the art that we see them post and assuming that they don't have any side hustles or they don't have any other gigs. We don't know Mm -hmm. how people live. You know, Mm -hmm. a lot of people have extra gigs, even if they are very well known for art. Um, A lot of people um, do other stuff. So um, take care of yourself, be healthy and don't be afraid or ashamed to have other gigs. You got to do what you got to do, right? Right. That's right. And and that's the thing that um, the path, to your creative success is never a straight line it's not a Mm. a thing that goes up like that like you're here and then your greatness is right there yeah Yeah, it's not not, no 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 it's more like you're right here you want to be there and then you're gonna go like (laughs) this and like that and then you're gonna switch and so on and then you one day you're still circling like i'm coming i'm still coming (laughs) (laughs) that's perfect oh that last bit is so a big mood big mood (laughs) Yeah. Big mood. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you find yourself behind the starting line uh, and then you got to squiggle on back up past mm-hmm. it and towards the goal again. And then you do your mm-hmm. little circle yeah. circle in the finish line there. I'm, yeah. I'm on my way. You, yeah. You make a couple of <laughs> passes and you still not like, nah, you know, and, but, but that's the thing that as l- no matter how far you get, you know, I still, I feel, I still feel that I still have ways to go with other things. Oh yeah. You know? Oh and, yeah. And, and you said this earlier, I'll never retire from art. That's mm-hmm. right. Cause I'm, that's a thing that's from coming out of you constantly. Yeah. This creativity, this thing that you want. And because we like video games, comics, movies, and all types of other pop culture that beats your inspiration. Oh yeah. So, so it's like a never ending cycle. And that's why you should hang out with other artists. Like we are here at Behance. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And I think, um, like you, you know, mentioning games, I, I, I'm really fascinated with, you know, you saying that you were uh, getting into mobile games. That's that's my ultimate goal, um, mm-hmm. is like creating a game because I think like when it comes to creativity, probably like the, the ultimate creative expression, I feel like, is a video game because mm. it's visual art, is animation it's storytelling yeah it's uh music it's you know it's everything and then it's interactive it's like everything combined into one and so that is where i would like to be but clearly there's no voodoo val games out there yet so the journey's not over you know you 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 kind of i think that i still have goals for myself you still have goals for yourself um mm-hmm. and also maybe a, a good thing to kind of say that like just because um you know us two are on the stream doesn't mean like this is the you know like uh, i think that if people can put you know streamers or their favorite artists or whoever on a pedestal and and think like oh they must have everything you know they're looking for they're they made it they're at this level or whatever but you never really know anybody else's journey unless Mm -hmm. you ask you know Mm -hmm. and people are going on their track and so um i think that um realizing that the people that i admire are just people not assuming that all that i see in somebody's portfolio is the only thing they've ever done i'm not seeing the Mm -hmm. the as somebody said bliss said in the chat you don't see the blooper reel you know, right. so you can't right. hold yourself to that standard. Mm-hmm. A lot of people that you admire are still going on their journeys um, and everybody gets there their own way. You know, yep. I That's spent right. a lot of years being like, you know, do you ever get that feeling, man? Like, you know, you look at somebody else's art and you're like, I wish I could be there. And you don't believe it's possible for yourourself. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, don't fall time. into that trap. It's no. hard not to fall into the trap. Right. It right. is hard not to fall into the trap, but mm-hmm. it is a trap nonetheless. Use that as fuel. Mm. Use that as fuel to say, okay, I, I want to be like that artist right there, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to feel bad that I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say, study that artist, say, hmm, what did they have to do to get there? What's their portfolio look like? What are some of the projects they worked on? And like you mentioned before, if you don't have a client project to work on, then you still make a, a passion project that fits that type of industry, that type of style, that type of medium so that you can get that experience in there and level up your portfolio. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, Bliss says, I knew I was going to be a cultural anthropologist and just look at me now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's sometimes, sometimes it goes that way, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I mean, the thing about being an artist is that you, you actually can, be anything right like i might not ever actually be a character from mortal kombat like i wanted to be when i was a kid but i can draw myself as a character in mortal kombat i can design mortal kombat-esque characters if i want to you know you can still take you know as as you were saying i feel like it kind of goes hand in hand like find Mm -hmm. those things that inspire you and make them possible in your own way that's right you know that's right there you go. So there's the challenge out there. I know that Aldari drew you as a Sith um, general oh, yeah. or something. I'm already in Star Wars because that's of right. That. You know, <laughs> I, I am in Star Wars. Aldari made it possible for me to be in Star uh-huh. Wars, which is my dream, which has there been my go. dream all along. There you you know, go. 
So s slowly you'll get there. You get yep. to all of it. <laughs> also, I just want to point out, um, we have maybe 25 ish minutes okay. left um, of the stream. Um, and so you've been kind of, we, you know, we kind of do dove straight into like life advice, health advice, you know, mm -hmm. all this stuff for art, but maybe we can kind of return back. You've been creating uh, like the background elements for our piece here, doing some yes. cool line art. I am imagining these or perceiving these as like the posters you might see in a tattoo parlor. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. So maybe we can talk a little bit about um, like a recap of what we're doing here. Sure. All right. Yes. So we have the character mm -hmm. and he needs to be in the setting that fits this character so i drew some tattoos i added some textures to the shirt and to the gloves i'm probably gonna change the color of the gloves i'm just thinking uh, but in the background it's like well we need to have something that reflects the tattoo artist and that tattoo environment mm -hmm. and uh most tattoo shops when you walk in there's artwork on the wall that you can pick your next tattoo and live with it forever and so um so that's what i wanted to do and now mention two of the things that I mentioned that I've drawn hundreds of are crosses mm -hmm. and hearts. And so I decided to go ahead and make that two of the posters in the background. I added a little frame, not much of a frame, but I, I also, I, I don't want to go too crazy with the background artwork because I want the character to stand out. Yeah. And yeah. So, so yeah, I don't, I'm not trying to be too exact, too clean. The, the line work, don't, don't judge me by my line work. We're live right now. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but there it is. But I use the same technique. I, I, I kept my brush the same way. I have the brush to where um, some, some of these brush strokes, uh, the line, line varies because of the pressure. And then some brush strokes is just, or these little dots, they're going to be the same size because all that is turned off all the options are turned off and so then mm -hmm. i can get a consistent dots everywhere i did use a shape for the um, this frame there it is it's a shape it's a it's real easy to jump in and grab some shapes here in illustrator uh and but when it came down to the pen uh everything or the the vector brush everything stayed the same and uh and that i kept the same basic round and i just kept switching the line weight and size to get what I want and boom just like that I have a ton of layers here I did name my layer tats mm -hmm. um I don't know what's in this layer I guess nothing is in there now so we can always get rid of it boom sometimes that happens I have mm -hmm. like groups and folders of stuff in my photoshop mm -hmm. painting files and then I'm like hunting through and I toggle them on and off and I'm like oh there's like eight layers here that are just empty <laughs> right <laughs> what did i do they're like, not doing anything mm -hmm. not contributing at all <laughs> right <laughs> and uh, so right here in this tattoo layer i am going to also add my signature because you must cool. always sign your work so i'm gonna go ahead and my signature down here in the corner somewhere boom bam there it is just real quick like 2022 got it so when i turn on so i can lock these tattoo layers turn on the tattoo artist there we go he's right there and i can always uh adjust that tattoo let's go select it and uh something else is getting caught up what is that oh that's that's the whole thing never mind so just go like this boom and move it over that is a really cool signature by the way i, th I just Thank feel you. like it's super neat Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, very welcome. We look at other artists and their lives and the things that they do, and I always wanted the tools that artists use. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want a signature mm -hmm. as an artist. You know, <laughs> well, like a cool signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go home right now, home to to the to home page or home screen, so we can you see that create a cloud backing up my file mm -hmm. and saving it to the cloud. And I'm gonna move over my iPad. Let's get you over there. Mm -hmm. And I bring over this big Cintiq. So we're going to switch up our screens. And uh, excuse me if my camera moves because I got a big Cintiq right here. Uh, You're going to uh. switch over to desktop, do some some magic maneuvering here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a big Cintiq right here next to me. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, And this is where you want that power of the desktop, Illustrator desktop. I love Illustrator on the iPad, but... I've been drawing with Illustrator on the desktop for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Already? Okay. 
and I've been drawing for 20 years uh, on Illustrator, and man, oh, as 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 uh, as Illustrator grows on the desktop and it becomes more and more powerful, I've been here for all of it. I love it. I love it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here we go. We got our screen set up. Mm -hmm. And so now, if you notice, this is uh my uh, home screen on my desktop in every file that I've created on my iPad will show up here on the screen, which is super cool because then I can always move through different uh, projects. Oh, so my pen, what's up pen? What's going on? There's my pen. Okay, come on. You don't want to move us all good. Let's go ahead and click on the Art Lifer series right here. This file, boom, here it comes. This is the part that I really, really love is that everything I've done on the iPad will show up on my desktop and I don't have to move a file. Like I don't have to save a file, email the file to myself or anything weird that we used to do. Now I just let the creative cloud handle it and it shows up on my next device. I am a bit of a hoarder. So I do have like a surface, an iPad, a Mac. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so any computer that I choose to use at that time, my files are there. And so very convenient. Yes. It's, uh, it's kind of uh, was mind blowing, like, because I, you know, started painting so much on the iPad and like just being able to be like, save and then like, mm, I'm going to move to my, com my, you know, my desktop and it's mm -hmm. right there and I pick up right where I left off. It's, there's really nothing better than that. I, you know, right. it's amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so you can see all the layers are saved. The layers that I had named, they're named. If I didn't, if I missed the name and there's a whole bunch of extra ones, extra layers back here and extra files. Uh, extra parts of drawings that I haven't done anything to it, but they're there. And if it was locked, it's locked. I can turn things off and on. I have full extra control of all the little bits and pieces, and I can access them through my layers panel. I love this layers panel because it's like the map. You can see what's in the drawing by looking here. You can see it. It's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. There goes my tattoos. Now I can highlight certain parts of the drawings like that's my frames here's the heart there's the cross there's the arrow with the heart and if i wanted to i can go ahead and rename some of these mm -hmm. um, but it's not necessary for now i got what i need there what i am going to do is um pick uh, work on this color outline this outline color because it's too close to the rest uh in terms of um opacity or I don't even know the correct word but it's I need it darker so mm -hmm. let's go ahead and get our color boom and this is what I like about working on desktop is that you it, it, well actually what I like about having all the colors or elements in one layer is mm -hmm. that I can just select that layer and just change the color if I want to so let's go to RGB yeah boom, make it blue bam and just like that I changed that color of the lines I can turn them off if I wanted to that, that was crazy. like a ghost. <laughs> yeah. That's actually really cool, but it's like you just, it's just <laughs> ethereal. This is yeah, awesome. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so that, so keeping track of what you put in a layer to me when working with vectors is super important because, you know, like this is my personal artwork, but if it was a client, they're like, Dan, we like the drawing, but can you make the outline red? You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to sit here and select all the different parts of the drawing that needs to change color. Right. I just go ahead and click on that layer, bam, mm -hmm. change the color and we're done. And I bill them for an hour of work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's going to take me a long while to do that. There's a lot of moving pieces in here. Yeah, and I yeah. just, you know, it's not like I have a group that I can just select. So. <laughs> I don't know how you think it works, but that's not right. how it works. <laughs> and, and, and you learned that lesson, right? You learned that lesson because it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning of any drawing, you want to go ahead, organize your layers. Yeah. Now, another thing that's going to happen because it is a creative cloud document, the title is mm -hmm. going to say AIC for Adobe Illustrator cloud. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the C stands for. Yes. And so control S to save. I'm on a PC command S to save on a Mac. You're constantly using those two um, keys, but because you're in the cloud, it'll also say regularly by itself. Um, I've lost work in the past. This has been a while since I have lost work, but that's because I got used to the control list. Yeah. Like, you got to save for yourself, save mm -hmm. for yourself. 
All right, so right now, the only thing I'm interested in doing at this moment with this drawing is getting this gradient out. Nice, and this is a couple of tricks that I, I use in my work. Uh, so let's take a look at, this is the apron and gloves right here, this layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and add gradients to that layer, but before I add the gradients, I'm gonna duplicate that layer so that in case I don't like the gradients, I can just get rid of that layer and I still have the original layer. I don't use the history panel. I don't undo, undo, undo several steps. I just, if I don't like something, I'll get rid of it. And mm -hmm. that's cool because I still have a copy. So you can always duplicate a layer. This is 132. I can click here and duplicate layer 132. Or I have a shortcut that I click with my finger on the keyboard, the alt key click and drag and boom there's the copy already right there just nice. like that yes and Quick i think and that easy yeah 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 i think that all key works in everything too and every other program so i'll click on my gradient there's my gradient um i like using the gradient tools in illustrator on the desktop because a lot more control and more options mm -hmm. it, it exists on the ipad but sometimes there's a lot of extra tweaking you have to do manually and uh and so here on the desktop it works i go ahead and change it negative 90 so that the shadow comes from the bottom to the top i now i need my opacity so there goes the transparency let's go ahead and multiply and turn it down a little bit there you go that so it's, so it's subtle cool. thank yeah. you thank you yeah you kind of want it to be subtle no, no, not too crazy um so i'll go ahead and lock those because i know i've used them this is just the full color of uh, the background on the character lock those up let's see what do we have here this is the shirt you know sometimes the shirt i do want another uh gradient on that so click and drag lock that layer select that the, the original layer select the copy layer add the gradient this time it's gonna we're gonna come from the top i may or may not leave it i don't know Let's go ahead and multiply. I love multiply because it gives you an extra sh shadow mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it combines with the color that's underneath. So I don't have to sit there and play with the colors and say, well, yeah. what's, what's, yeah, you know, uh, saturation and hue and all that. Now, nah, let me just go ahead and uh, do the multiply or I can do the screen if I wanted a lighter color. And there it is. I got that. Uh, what nice. do we have? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What do we have here? I don't know what that is. There's nothing there. Yeah, there it is. It's the mouth. All right. Those ghost, those <laughs> ghost layers again sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Let's lock it. I am looking for the tattoo. So let's go look for the tattoo. I think it's right here. There it is. So let's lock all these other layers. Um, lock that outline layer. So that's done. And this is the tattoos. So in the tattoos, let me move some of these out of the way. And bring this in a little bit. Got it. Uh, let's go ahead and make a copy of, uh, or duplicate that layer of the tattoo layer. And then I can turn off the old, the original one and use this new layer. But now I want the radial gradient because yeah. sometimes, uh, the way the light hits your skin, I don't know who has tattoos around here. I know I do. And, uh, and so it's never an even tone. It's, uh, it's always, um, it, you, you see the, the skin uh shine over the tattoo so you don't have a solid color and mm -hmm. once i have that gradient go to multiply maybe leave it at 100 why not and then let's take a look at what it looks like and start making adjustments in the opacity so it kind of blends in but it becomes like a, a a shadow of it in the in the skin and it doesn't it lets you know it's there but it's not attracting attention and those like and I think that's um, one of the principles of graphic design is the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. You know, you want some things to stand out and be in the picture, and then you want some other things to be subtle. Yeah, and just the way that you that you've done that, it's subtle, um, and you you know, but it also as it interacts with the different levels of or. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the different values of blue that it comes in contact with, it just mm -hmm. blends even better into mm -hmm. the piece, mm -hmm. um, which I feel like I'm looking at him and he's got these really cool tattoos, but it's also not, as you said, it's not distracting from the rest of the piece. It doesn't look too busy. It's, yeah. It looks really good. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and I, I like the gradients and illustrator as an answer to what you do in Photoshop. You mm. know, you get your blendings and, yeah, and all yeah. these gradients in Photoshop. And it's like, ah, I like that. Uh, but we can't do that with vector. So we have to find those little tricks and work around. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I would love to um, know because I know that we have like this is a, uh, a stream where we're using Illustrator, but I know that it's going to attract illustrators of all kinds and maybe not just illustrators who are using Illustrator. So I would love to know uh, from you folks in chat. What is your go to um, uh, program or Adobe app for illustration. And um, after this, are you guys going to dive into Illustrator for illustration if you haven't already? Um, I know that just watching this that I've been inspired to get my practice on um, working <laughs> on Illustrator on the iPad because mm -hmm. I actually don't use the blob brush a lot. Um, whenever I'm in there, I usually am using like the pencil brush or some of the paint swipes. So watching you work with that today was really inspiring. Um, and I feel like I want to kind of jump in there and, and see if I can, uh, sharpen the blob brush chops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it looks like we got Cody bear chiming in. She uses Photoshop fresco for illustration. Um, Becca is using Photoshop. Um, Bruce does use Photoshop and illustrator. Awesome. Do you do illustrator on the desktop or iPad or both Bruce? Let us know. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. Um, and gosh, the, again i just have to point out your your brush strokes are so buttery <laughs> they're so <laughs> smooth and satisfying to watch and i i feel like you and obviously you have put in a lot of time and practice to get to the point where you can do this but i feel like i'm gonna get in today and i'm gonna practice and i'm going to see you know this as my expectation of the reality is i'm probably <laughs> you know like the expectation versus reality uh -huh. videos uh -huh. it's not gonna be this buttery but i'm gonna practice and i'm going to have um like the dan buttery smoothness uh mm -hmm. brush strokes and illustrator um one of these days i'm gonna i'm gonna get there you get there. You can do it. I believe in you. Uh, Bliss says, I use Fresco, Illustrator, and Photoshop. I'm just mm. greedy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I like it. It's a good way to be greedy. It is. That's right. It mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. um, Bruce says he does use desktop um, for both Photoshop and Illustrator. All right. Good stuff. Uh, Bruce says, baby steps with Fresco. Awesome. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I like it. Um, but I love to see, I love to see how people, um, uh, illustrate and like I, I mentioned earlier different approaches to um, meet the same end uh, and uh, well I guess you know illustration speaking it's not meeting the same end but to perform you mm -hmm. know the same kind of task doing illustration um, it's always very inspiring to me um, and uh, why don't we I'm kind of, we're kind of going through like the first stages uh, here of this illustration as you get going and I'm just realizing just how fast you sketch yeah like, just how fast you you lay this out and put this down and mm -hmm. I know that we have you know maybe 10 12 minutes left here of the stream and so we're probably not going to get through all all of this right. obviously in one stream but about how many iterations of the sketch do you do like do you throw this down and then do it once more on top or is this it so no yeah it's going to be one more after this this one okay. this is why it's fast because you know i'm open to uh errors and wrong lines and i'm like yeah we're just going to leave that for now I'm not going to worry about it i just mm -hmm. need to get the idea out and uh, but then the next layer after this is going to be nice, clean lines. I'm going to really zoom in tight like this and I'll be mm -hmm. like, OK, you know, I want this line to go this way and this way. You know, now I want to take my time and go much slower. And, but that's also where you lose some of that playfulness in the line. So this is why I like the blob brushes, because sometimes when you're drawing in an illustrator and you're using the pen tool, which I love the pen tool also, mm -hmm. and you get your pass, sometimes they're too clean. Oh, you know, yeah. Too yeah. sharp. It's like, ah, it's a sticker. Yes, but it's like, ah, mechanical. And so yeah. I like 
I, I want to be able to give it another pass and it's cleaner, but it's also still has that natural organic looking strokes. I've, I felt that so many mm -hmm. times where I love the sketch more than I love how I'm starting to like render it out and finish a painting I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where did that character go? Mm -hmm. You know, the right. character and the, the, the richness and like the expression of what my original concept. And mm -hmm. sometimes it can be like a, a, a tricky thing, right? To go to do the sketch. And I think when you have a sketch down or a concept down, your mind, it's almost like impressionist art where your mind is kind of filling in things and that sketch looks super awesome. And you're not only just perceiving the sketch that's there, but your, your brain is like filling in the blanks and you're imagining mm -hmm. the full potential mm -hmm. of the piece. And then sometimes when we start to clean it up, it's like, like you said, it's too mechanical or too clean too you know, there's no more emotion. Yeah. in you know the lines and so it it takes um takes some time sometimes to kind of like mm -hmm. clean it but keep that character yeah. in there um and yeah. i run into that like even now like i run into that all, a lot mm -hmm. yeah and, and so so you have to try to find that balance and so sometimes it does take a lot of layers mm. to to get that it's like uh, i missed something Mm -hmm. um, I worked on a mural many years ago and they paid me to just draw the mural mm -hmm. and somebody else painted it. It was a oh, 99 okay. feet long mural. I worked at it. Yeah, I did it in Illustrator. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was huge. And uh, and so I presented a sketch. They loved the sketch. They said, go ahead, Dan. I finished the drawing in Illustrator and they're like, no, that's not what we asked for. I was like, that's exactly what the sketch that, is. Yeah, that's you know? exactly and then they said, no, we like that sketchy look. So they paid me again <laughs> to go back and start from that sketch and do it in Illustrator, but still have that sketchy rough look to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and that because there's like something about some of the easy to look at lines that just gives that that natural organic feel to it. So, yeah, so yeah it takes time to to get there. Hey, at so. least they paid you again. Oh, yeah, that's right. It. That's great. That mm -hmm. is wonderful mm -hmm. um, because I was just like, you painted or you illustrated a 90 plus foot mural design and they were like, go back to stage one. I'd be mm -hmm. like, honey, do you have stage one money? That's because right. Because that's a lot of work. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that that's is a right. lot of work you're asking me to do. And that's, I mean, that I, I, I find that really fascinating because that's one of those instances where I, I, I feel like you did give them the sketch, right? Mm -hmm. You gave them the sketch, you gave them the concept, but I think that their idea of the progression um, of, or the process of the artwork was completely different than how you went about it because mm -hmm. you were like, okay, here's the sketch, here's proof that I've been working on it here. You know, you can see all the elements. Are you happy with these concepts? Mm -hmm. um, and they were just kind of thinking about it differently than, you know, you were thinking about it. And mm -hmm. um, that does happen sometimes. And I think that um, it's kind of great to share stories like that because I think that, you know, people come to us for creative work because they're not design minded or, you know, mm -hmm. like they're not illustrators, they, you mm -hmm. know? And so the process of getting from point A to point B um, is a totally different thing in somebody's mind who is not an illustrator or designer than it is in reality. Um, I feel like that's a great example of you even showed them the sketch yeah, and it right. just was not even the same <laughs> kind of thing that, uh -huh. you know, there was, but somebody would have said, well, did you show them the sketch? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and they um, approved it. Yeah, and they loved it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I just I find that very interesting. Yeah, and they're like, "Give us back that sketch." <laughs> yeah, like, give us all right, sketch cool. <laughs> so then, how did you do? You just you just like made a uh, a stylized sketch then um, at that point. Yeah. If they wanted the sketch vibe, but you have to would you would have to add more detail and clean it up. Right, and and that's where brushes come into play. And so we haven't talked about that because that's a whole different tool. Mm -hmm. um the the paintbrush tool mm -hmm. uh, so having certain type of brushes with that that gives you line work texture makes it look rough makes it look a little gritty mm -hmm. that's where that comes into play um textures in themselves so you can uh, add 
little shading. I did that dots earlier by hand on this background right here, mm -hmm. but there are brushes that you can just sit there and and just nice. do a couple of brush strokes and boom, you got those there little dots or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh it uh, um <laughs> we we've touched but a tiny percentage of what Illustrator can do. <laughs> yeah. That's the uh -huh. thing too. It's like yeah. there's so much that can happen and I think that I could use Illustrator and you could use Illustrator and we could build completely separate careers, never touching the same tools that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the other mm -hmm. does in Illustrator and still be Illustrator that's right. creatives, you yep. know? That's right. And that's the thing is uh, no one, and this is something that I tell uh, people, artists that you're, you're never going to know all of Illustrator. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're, you're, you're working for Adobe and you're in there. That's your with job the, with to the know machines. All of yeah, yeah, yeah. But as an artist, you're gonna find the tools that work for you. You're gonna find the tools that give you the artwork that you need at that given time. And then from there is is where where you'll find the things that you're just comfortable with. And like I can do what you do, but this way. Mm -hmm. In the same yep. app. In the yep. same app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Um, we got about five minutes left here, um, so maybe. Uh, if you come to a stopping point um, that you feel is appropriate, we can um, talk a little bit about what you um, worked on today and the process that we went through. Maybe a little recap. We got some sure. comments in the chat. I love uh, <laughs> Clever says sketches have such charisma. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's that's so, <laughs> exactly what it is. Charisma. And then Becca says, um, I usually like my work when it's sketchy. Then I try to finish it and I hate it. I mm -hmm. Yep. Big mood, mm -hmm. big mm -hmm. mood, because I, mm -hmm. I did that. Um, I, I did like a, I started recently. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do full body illustrations. I'm going to do like full body characters. And I'm going to stop. You know, I love doing portraits, mm -hmm. my favorite thing, but I'm going to try to do more full bodies. And I did a couple and they turned out good, but I woke up the next morning and I was like, the sketches for these were way cooler. Yeah. The <laughs> they were way better uh -huh. than what I finished. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, unfortunately. It happens. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and then maybe we can do a recap after a okay. while. Cool. So so what we did today was um work on this character here. He is mm -hmm. the art, tattoo artist. Now the series of characters that I have ready to go are actual artists who work in the field at that time. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, each one of these characters is gonna be totally unrelated to art because uh, us are in, in our, our career, we weren't always professional artists. We were, yep. we had a job at some point doing something totally unrelated to art while in the uh, uh, on our own time, we were chipping away at our art career. And so that's what I wanna show with these characters. But here's what I did today. I focused on some of these um, layers and, and elements and things that make up this character. So let's go ahead and turn off some things here. Boom, boom, boom. I love how on desktop you can just hit the eyeball and things mm -hmm. are gone, like just like that. And so here's, uh, oh, that's uh, that stayed there. I didn't mean to keep that there, but it all started with the outline and um, the of the character. And I do have a template for the body. Let me see. There it is. And so I have a body that a pose that I'm going to go with. Mm -hmm. That's the pose. Uh, when I first drew this astronaut, there was no body at like pose or template. I just kind of drew the astronaut. But out of this drawing, I went ahead and pulled out the bodies. Like what would the body inside look like? Mm -hmm. And of course, that's my body shape right there. So I'm cool with it. And, uh, and so out of that template, I went ahead and did an outline. Now, sometimes at first, when I do an outline, I just go ahead and start scribbling and drawing and then come in and make sure that some of these outside edges have a thicker line weight because that um, makes that silhouette of the body. It, 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 it lays out like, what are we looking at? Mm -hmm. And uh, and that drives our attention. And then the rest is just little extra details. So as the drawing goes on, I start adding extra details. And this is where the blob brush, of course, we were using the blob brush and um in illustrator on the ipad but there's the blob brush here and um desktop also and so there are lots of extra settings that we can turn on and look at we can also merge 
our let our uh, brush strokes like we did on the iPad. We can change the size of our brush and even say, okay, I wanted a fixed size so it won't change depending on the pressure. And so I can just keep drawing no matter how much or how hard I press, the line weight is still the same. And when I'm ready for the pressure sensitivity and you know, I do have this Cintiq here, so mm -hmm. it does support pressure and so on. And when you have a device connected to your computer or, or on a surface device and uh, that um, that will support pressure, then mm -hmm. Illustrator will recognize these and they will show you these uh, options where if you don't have a type of device that supports pressure, that'll be grayed out and you won't be able to use them. But there it is, pressure. Gotcha. And I will go ahead and make this a four. The variation is going to be full variation. Uh, it's not in percentages like it is an iPad. But this is okay and then click okay and now i can have a thick and thin line right here bam look at that love it yes buttery oh my gosh yes that brush butter <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's amazing and uh and and so one tip for anybody using the um, blah brush on desktop if you are using a very thin brush and can't get the the thin thinnest thinnest line that you want and you've already used like a, a a one or a two and really the the lowest that i'll go is like a two so that you still have that variation in the pressure like uh, so here we go you know you still have a variation and that thin line is still not thin enough then i suggest you make the canvas bigger mm. the drawing bigger so that the thinner lines are actually thinner. And I do that with my pen tool also. It's like if I am, I'm already using the pen tool in, the, in my line weight, I can, it, it's uh, all the way, I and mean, sometimes you type it in, you type in a 0 0.06, like trying to get the thinnest line possible and it's still not thin enough. Okay, then make the drawing bigger so yeah. that the sizes will change relative a, to the drawing. That is a great tip. And I think we're, we're at the end of Boom. our time here. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure getting to hang out and talk with you today, man. Um, it always is really, but um, I had a, a blast. Um, thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. Um, I hope that you had fun. Uh, Delta Tango Mike. And um, let us know where everyone can find you um, real quick before we um, pop out here. Find me anywhere on Delta Tango Mike. That's my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and my website, Delta Tango Mike. Check me out. Come on through. We have a Discord where we like to draw and hang out every day on the Discord. Awesome, awesome. And as Cody Bear says in chat, uh, we're going to head over, everyone's heading over to Twitch to watch uh, Katrina for her weekly show. Um, so definitely head over there for that. Um, again, it's been a blast. Absolute pleasure hanging out with you, man. Um, and we will see you around the bend, folks. Adios, everyone.